to be able to explore the other special registers, uh, in the important ones that we are focusing on, um, I wanted to kind of take a detour and understand the idea of uh, uh, exceptions. Right. And exceptions also cover interrupts. So what exceptions essentially mean is that, you know, your CPU was doing something, then either an external interrupt happened, an external event happened, or something, you know, internally happened um, that causes the CPU to, you know, kind of change its mode of um, uh, execution, well, mode of execution, or, you know, stop what it's processing at the moment jump somewhere else, you know, fetch some other code and handle this interrupt or this exception, right? And once it's done handling, it can come back here and continue to, you know, uh, continue with its old business of, you know, whatever it was doing here. So exceptions is uh, essentially, you know, that, that idea that the CPU needs to abandon what it's doing right now. Abandon is too strong a word. It needs to kind of park what it's doing right now go do something else for a while and then come back. An analogy from the real world or the the day-to-day -day life is you're reading a book, somebody knocks at the door, you got, got to kind of, you know, put a bookmark, go attend the door, you know, finish the business there, maybe, you know, uh, attend to the delivery guy or something like that. Then come back, open up the book, you know, and go back to, you know, your original task of reading the book. So that's the idea of exception, right? Okay, so if this much is understood, let me kind of, you know, bring myself here. So if uh, this much is understood, then the, the thing that you should be imagining is that the CPU was executing something, you know, there were status registers and control or configuration registers, and uh, whatever it was executing, the, you know, the calculations were uh, present in the GPRs, right, GPRs, and the program counter was pointing to the instruction that it was going to fetch next from the memory. Now let's say an interrupt happens. So the question now is, the CPU needs to go do something else. And once it is done doing that something else, it needs to come back. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, what is the information the CPU needs to remember? What is the kind of bookmark that in case of CPU, um, uh, would look like essentially what what that bookmark will look like we are wanting to explore that so first off let me also you know talk a little bit more about exceptions just to give you idea so exceptions are primarily of two types right asynchronous and synchronous right? synchronous would mean that these are kind of you know um system level calls like svc this is an instruction so one EL calling another EL for requesting a service, that kind of thing. But it's synchronous, meaning you know when this uh, uh, exception will happen because it's a result of an instruction. Then in asynchronous, we have uh, like the system, um, okay, we have the system error, right? And then we have um, the IRQ and the FIQ, fast interrupt and, you know, normal interrupt, so to speak. And these can happen from outside the CPU as interrupts. And these are like, you know, something internal to, to the CPU goes wrong. So asynchronous, synchronous. The question then is, depending on which of these kind of exception happens, the CPU needs to take a decision as to you know where to point its program counter so i'll give you like a rough idea of what what happens so four things can happen right either uh, you know either let's say s error or irq fiq or synchronous error right or synchronous event exception so now what the CPU does is there is a V bar register, the vector base address register, where you kind of specify upfront, right? During the boot up time or during the setup time, you specify an address, let's say hex A, B, C, D, right? And now what happens is if this, uh, if this uh, 
interrupt or exception happens, the C the CPU is going to be like, oh wait, there was a VBAR register that the user must have set. And I can look inside that for the address as to where I can jump. Right. And depending on you know which kind of exception it is, it jumps on like different location. And again, you know, like a heads up, each of these locations is like 128 bytes away from the base and the base is specified here again so this is like you know long story short like a quick uh, preview or quick peek into uh, how exceptions work but then this is like you know the program counter's value needs to be set to this what happens to the program counter value that the cpu had right now while it was doing its usual business well that needs to be saved somewhere so there are going to be internal registers you know that can save the program counter value of the general of the current thing that the cpu is doing and it is going to save the state of the cpu right and there are registers for that and so we'll take a look at those registers also but i wanted to kind of you know bring bring to your attention that the cpu can go on doing the normal stuff and during an exception it needs to jump elsewhere do something else then come back and in, in an attempt or in the process of going jumping elsewhere it needs to save some state and while coming back it needs to restore some state right um, it needs to restore some state and for doing that there are registers and we'll take a look at those